All right. Has anybody gotten that in the chat? Whoops. Yes, no, maybe. Um, excuse me, can you repeat the question, please? Can you all see the um, papers on the chat? No. 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 Okay. Let me Anita, try again. I'm yes. just going to, now that I'm live, live streaming, I'll try and make you the host. Okay. Yeah? Uh, and maybe that will mean you can screen share. Okay. Let me, um, let me just, there we go. Luckily, all of these students are aware that my communication skills with the computer are lacking. <laughs> <laughs> so they all know it's going to be a minute before I can get my stuff going here. All right, let me see now. All right. No, it's still not there. Why is it not there? Okay. Well, I can save. All right. You can see the button at the bottom of the screen, share screen. Here we go. Got it. Okay. So, people seem to like the figurative language information that I was sharing. Whoops. Let's see if I can figure out how to make this smaller. Nope, that's one. So, we're going to do a little reading practice with our... Um... Okay. If I can spit the words out this morning. We're going to do some reading practice with our um, figurative language. Oh. Okay. All right. Don't need all of these things, so I'm going to try to get them out of the way. All right. Everybody see that all right? Yes. Okay. So each one of these little short paragraphs has some form of figurative language in them. So I just want you guys to read. Um, we'll read one at a time and then we will figure out what the figurative language is in the short story. Okay. So who would like to read first? May I? Yes. Okay, um, from which I should start. Um, we're gonna start with siblings. Okay. Siblings, Molly and Matt are siblings. Everybody thinks Molly is a real peach. She has many friends and is always busy doing things to help her family. Matt is a night owl, so he sleeps in all morning. He never helps his family do chores around the house. Matt always get in trouble. Okay. okay. Um, one little thing right there, Matt, always get in trouble. Uh, there's a little typo there. It should always get in trouble. Yeah, always yeah, no problem. Trouble. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what were the figurative language phrases in this little short story? Um, I think real pitch. Okay. And night owl. All right. Uh, I don't know. Maybe mm, that's it. Okay. So what does it mean in this little short story when they say she's a real peach? Mm. Is a real peach could be a person who has a busy life, for example. So he's a very active person doing lots of things. Uh, in contraposition with 
nine hour old so he's a kind of lazy person who doesn't like um, doing things and prefer for example as um, written in the test matt prefers sleeping all morning so it gives me the idea of a person that uh, is very lazy and not very active actually i don't know okay Let's think about that for a second. We'll start with peach. What do you think of when you think of the peach itself as a fruit? Um, a peach, yeah, reminds me of something very shiny. I don't know, something very colorful and something related to the day. Um, something very tasty. Okay. But also, I don't know. I don't know, actually. Okay. Um, all right, let's go on down and look at the night owl. What do you think about when you think of an owl? Still still me? Okay, sorry. Yeah, go uh, Night owl, um, I'm thinking uh, about a night bird. So a bird that lives um uh, at night and that sleeps during the day so maybe matt could be also a um, person who prefers staying up until late and as an owl prefers staying alone for example and this explains the sentence that say um he never helps his family and and so forth for example. Okay. All right. Everybody agree with those two? Yes. All right. So somebody that's a peach is somebody who's really sweet. They're pretty to look at. Um, always pleasant, those kinds of things. And the night owl is, yes, definitely somebody who likes to stay up late at night. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any Good questions? Job. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Any questions on those two? No, no. I'm fine. All right. Let's go on to Jim and Kelly. Christina, you have your hand up. Would you like to read? Hey, Veronica, how you have been? <laughs> I have been fine. How have you been? Oh, I'm still working. Yeah, oh, you okay. Watering <laughs> through wrong, but you know, thanks God working remotely, so I can you know handle all my stuff. Oh, we can't hear you. today even though it's half past six roughly in Italy uh, but uh, I'm still working and that's why when I'm my job I can't switch on my camera because you know we can't we can't divulge some secrets from your company this is a private company and sometimes I really you know of course when I'm having my lunch there's no lessons <laughs> so <laughs> but um, I'm still working Okay, I will continue. Jim and Kelly, yes, this is the first. Yes. Okay, thank you for giving me the floor and hopefully you're doing great today. Uh, Jim and Kelly are getting married in two months. Jim loves the uh, compliment Kelly. Uh, to compliment, sorry, Kelly, he always says, you are my sunshine. Kelly is a singer and Jim always says that her voice is music to his ears. Uh, Kelly loves when Kim compliments her. She thinks Jim is a real catch. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, she thinks. Yeah. All right. What did we have there for figurative language? Uh, figurative language. Uh, the way is exposed, like the, all these kind of words, all these kind of, you know, like phrases are uh, actually portrayed, you know. Like Kelly is a singer, and Jim always says that voice uh, is in music to his ears. So I think this is a figurative, like a voice that is always like uh, music for my ear, like the music is for my ear. So another figurative, I think, like um, mm, another way, like you're my sunshine is also figurative. Yeah. Okay. What does that mean when he says you are my sunshine? When says like you're my sunshine, I mean like you are everything for me. I, you know, I like you, I love you, all this kind of figurative languages, yes. And what to expressing, maybe to exposing or to, you know, 
uh, exposing yourself towards your counterparts. But of course, you can't say with everyone that you are my sunshine, no? <laughs> it's just Remember, it is not literal. So no, we cannot so, say that everybody is I our sunshine. Love, uh, you know, people like loved ones or maybe like lovers, like people who are loving each other. But right. you would not say this to a stranger, correct? No, correct. No, absolutely. Okay. Definitely not in a private, maybe maybe in a, some very formal meetings or in a formal, you know, you, you can't you, you can't speak like that. And in fact, this is a colloquial language and in the business world, we're not using this kind of expression. Even you know, I'm saying in any in any languages is more formal, is more straightforward and immediately objective what you're looking for so yeah yes that's why it's a figurative way of speaking okay and what about there's one more in there jim is a real catch what does that mean he's a real cat uh, he's someone who draws your attention yeah like you're drawing my attention catch catching my attention yeah a cool person uh maybe open-minded could be or maybe even sometimes could be handsome or beautiful for women so it could be a different way of interpreting this catch when you're catching someone's attention. So, okay. Anybody else have anything they would like to add? Yes, maybe you can have something further. Maybe add to please. <laughs> yes. That's what Francisco, do you have something to add? Hello, teacher Benera. Hello. How do you feel today? I am fine. How are you today? I feel I feel happy to see to see you and also hear that about you. Thank you. All right. Do you have anything different to say about Jim is a real catch? Or do you agree with Christina? Vinny Tavani, at this point, I am agree with my classmates. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Nope. Okay. So we determined that you are my sunshine, is somebody who makes you really proud. They mean a whole lot to you. There's someone you love, someone you care about. All right, music to his ears means that the music, that her voice is pleasant. He likes to hear it. It um, is comforting. It's music to his ears. All right, and then the last one, Jim, is a real catch. That means he's a great guy. You are lucky to get this guy. You're going to marry this guy. He's the best. He's going to compliment you. He's going to take care of you. All those kinds of things. So that makes Jim a real catch. All right. Okie dokie. Let's look at the snowstorm. Um. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who would like to read? Francisco, you had your hand up a minute ago. Would you like to read now? Yes, please. Okay, go right ahead. The snow storm. Jill's favorite season is winter. On December 1st, her town got a snowstorm. Jill? ran around her house yelling. Our backyard is a blanket of snow. Jill's dad screamed. It's a refrigerator in here. Jill's mom just wanted to sleep and said, silent is golden. Okay. So we've got three little pieces of figurative language in there. Francisco, do you know what they are? Silent is 
silent is golden. Okay, silence is golden. Do you know what? It's, it is a refrigerator in here. Okay, that's the second one. Thank you so much for giving me the chance, Venita. Okay, so let's talk about, we also have one that says our backyard is a blanket of snow, a blanket of snow. So let's start with that one. What does it mean when you think of a blanket of snow in the yard? Amit. Yes, teacher, how are you? I am fine, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine too. It's been so long. I didn't uh, present your lecture. Sorry, because I was busy a little bit. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. About the question, our backyard is a blanket of snow. I think when the snow is coming uh, through the house, it's covered it all uh, step by step uh, through the time. So it's became like uh like a high level of snow we can consider it as a blanket to go to cover the body of the house okay yeah all right that sounds like a good one does everybody agree with that a blanket the blanket of snow covered the house and the yard all right let's look at the next one at our next, um, hold on, oh geez. Our next figurative language section here. It's a refrigerator in here. What does that mean? Anybody know? Think about the refrigerator and how we're comparing it in this sentence. Refrigerators are cold. They are cold and sometimes dark inside. So sometimes when you have a snowstorm, it might be a dark outside. It's raining here today. I don't know if you can see out the window, but it's kind of cloudy and dark here. Yes, right. Can I try? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just confused about the, the, the word refrigerator. It's like a fridge. Yeah, it's a refrigerator, uh, an ice box. Um, it's the the box that's electrical that you keep your food in to keep it cold or frozen. Okay, okay. So when the, the snow is uh, uh, glow down, uh, it it will uh, it will avoid the, the sun from the city. So the, the temperature it will rise uh, step by step. Uh, sorry, it will uh, go down step by step until it reach zero or below. So that's temperature is uh, with comparing the, with the fridge, it will be the same or it will be more cold than it. So we can call it as a refrigerator. All right. Refrigerator. refrigerator. Refri yes, refrigerator. Sorry. There you go. Perfect. Okay. That's good, that's exactly right. So that means it's cold, cold, cold in the house. Um, okay, and mom thinks silence is golden. Do you have any idea what silence is golden means? Yes. Okay. Okay, silence is golden. Uh, I heard I wisdom say that uh, if, if, the, if the speaking word was from silver, the silence will be from gold. Because uh, with comparing uh, with that phrase, when you, uh, when you sit down with the gathering people and they talk about something, if you don't know about the thing, you should be silenced because once you talk and you don't know, 
and discussing and make arguments, mm, it will be uh, a problem there. So in that, in that uh, way, they choose silence is golden because you will be like, nobody will, will know you, who you are, what is your identity. I think so. And also uh, for, for, uh, for the snow uh, example, it will be like uh, out of noise. When the snow uh, come down, the, the noise will uh, it's like disappear because uh, the, the snow it will interrupt the, the 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 noises outside. For example, the noise of satellite, the noise of uh, even cars, it will be less coming uh, coming outside because of uh, the, the road will be covering with the uh, ice. So. It will be silence, and that's gold because your mind will be free at that time. No okay. noise at all. Okay. Yes. Yes. So silence is golden means it's you love quiet. It's peaceful, and your mind can rest and relax. Very good job. All right. Let's look at the next one. The old car. Who would like to read the old car? Uh, I'm sorry, hey. Benita. Can I yes? just? Uh intervene here could you yes. uh, when i made you host um i didn't realize i'm no longer co-host so could you make me co-host i certainly can thank you thanks sorry about you that. are very welcome all right the old car who wants to try and read that one for us this is francisco may i try please uh, yes, you may. The old car. After Ashley's old brother moved away to college, she got her family's old car. It was 20 years old and very rusty. Her mom thought the car was a lemon, but her dad just thought it was a diamond in the roach. Ashley was just happy and finally had a car to drive. Okay. All right. Let's look at these. Francisco, do you know which, which uh, phrases are our figurative language here? The car was a lemon. Okay. And what does that mean? The car was a lemon. It means the narrator is describing the car as a lemon. Okay. Um, has anybody ever heard that sentence? I bought a car and it was a lemon. It was a lemon. That means that the car is not a good car. So um, it's breaking down. It's not running properly. Tires are bad. It's just a bad car all around. Um, in Oklahoma, there used to be years and years ago, a lemon law that prohibited car lots from selling people cars that were in disrepair and not running properly. So it was called the lemon law. And you had so many days, if you bought a new car, you had so many days to take it back to the car lot and get your money back because it was a bad car. So that's what that means. It was a lemon. It was sour, it was no good. All right, what about the next one? Diamond in the rough, the rough. Have you ever heard that phrase, diamond in the rough? May I teacher? Yes. Um, actually, it's the first time that I think that um, that uh, thinks that the car was something special, like something um, that is not very common. 
I don't know, maybe something vintage that is fascinating. Um, is kind of um, have something that is difficult to find. That is correct. Not, okay. That is correct. Yes. And so we think of a diamond and when the diamond is being created, it's um, in the dirt and the rocks. So it's, you know, if you yes, want you to find something special, you have to dig through all of that stuff um, to find the diamond. So diamond in the rough means it's something special and rare, and there are not, not very many of them. Yes. Uh, can I explain it? Yes, you may. Uh, I think the diamond is coming out in a very difficult situation. It's like high temperature, um, high pressure, and uh, a lot of circumstances due to the to the sand uh, is in to the ground. So yeah, w when a person uh, carry uh, things on on his mind always as he's overthinking, he have he has a lot of responsibilities. He got tired from work and from living. So after that, he appeared that all and just shine as nothing has happened so that is the diamond and a rough okay yes anybody have anything else to add there nope alicia would you like to read our next one kim's math test thank you ma'am for giving me opportunity absolutely thank you Kim's math test. Kim is in fifth grade and her teacher's name is Miss Smith. Miss Smith is a drill surrogate in math class. She's very strict. Kim had a big math test this morning. She studied hard and thought it was a piece of a cake. Afterwards, Miss Smith told her she did a good job. Okay. Does everybody know what the word strict means? Strict, yes. Um, okay. Strict is very disciplined in a manner. Okay. Related to our work, you know, teachers like most of the teachers really uh, strict in her, her subjects, maybe. That is correct. So, Mrs. Smith is a drill sergeant in math class. So that means that she is very strict. All right? Yes. So let's look at the next one. A piece of cake. In this story, what does a piece of cake mean about the math test? That is something easy to perform. Yeah. Yes, that it was very easy. All right. Good job. Those were pretty, pretty self-explanatory, weren't they? All right. Love poems. Who would like to read love poems? Anybody who hasn't had an opportunity to read? Yes, teacher. Alejandro. Would you like to read for us? I will love to, uh, Miss right. Benita. Miss Benita, thank you. Love thank poems. You. The whole class is written love poems today. Some of the kids have thought of gone of good lines, but some of the kids are just goofing up. Tim wrote, "She's the apple of my eye." Uh, Morgan wrote, "He is my uh, knife. Knight is sheen armor." Bill just wrote, "That is cool." Bill had his Re re rewriting his poem. Okay. Sin. Excuse me. Okay. Alejandro, what's our first figurative language in there? Uh, the kids are just goofing up. Okay. What does that mean? 
Mm, something that is uh, no sense. Some, yes. I don't know. Yes. Something that's nonsense. They're just messing around. They're not doing their assignment. Good job. Okay, what's the next one? Uh, she's the apple of my eye. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, uh, someone who take care of a lot. Okay. Does everybody agree with that? The apple of my eye. She is the apple of my eye. Teacher, may I try? Yes. Yes, uh, she is the apple of my eye. Uh, it's, it's used for a special person, for uh, someone love. Yes, that is yeah. correct. Yes. Somebody special. Okay. Yes, teacher, right. may I try? Yes, what's the next one? No, about the apple. No, oh, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I, I heard once a doctor said one apple a day keep you uh, far off sickness uh, <laughs> one day or one month. I don't think so. But yeah, yeah. so when I say she is the apple of my eye, so when i looking at her, it will give me more uh, once more day to live. Mm. One Maybe. more day, yeah. Maybe. Um, the saying is an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So you're on the right track. But in this particular phrase, um, she is the apple of my eye. It means that she is his favorite person. She is my favorite person. Yes, yes. All right. So we've got one more in there. What is it? Anybody know? Uh, he is my knight in shining armor. Yes. What does that mean? I don't know, Miss Arvinita. <laughs> the first time. Okay. Anybody else know what that, that is? is? Yeah. Mom, may I try? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, Anisha, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Welcome. Uh, he is my knight in shining armor. It, uh, it means he described his beauty. Or uh, he likes uh, of uh, he likes uh, her love. Okay. Maybe I'm not. I'm just guessing. Oh, that's okay. That's why we're here. Anybody else have anything different that they think about that? Yes. Okay. What do you think it is? Well, this um, figurative language expression reminds me of someone who is brave. Okay. So it reminds me an idea of bravery. Okay. Actually. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Okay, let's... Uh... Hey, can, can I try, teacher? Absolutely, go right ahead. Okay, I think he's my knight in shining armor means that he's kind and brave. Yes, he's kind, he's brave, he's coming to rescue you. He's everything you hoped he would be. So we think about this when we think of knight in shining armor, we think about all of the Disney movies where the princess was trapped in the castle or something. And here came the knight riding up on his white pony and he saved the day. So yes, that's what it means. Somebody who is going to take care of you and rescue you from all of your problems. We should all be so lucky, I guess. <laughs> all right, let's look at the next one. The last straw, somebody who would like to read who hasn't had an opportunity yet. Alicia? Yes. Yes, ma'am. The Go last ahead. straw. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. The last straw. Mandy just got a new job at a big company. She has been working like a dog. Her boss isn't very nice and yells at her almost every day. 
Last week, he told her she needed to redo a big project that took her two weeks to do. Mindy said, "That is the last straw. I'm quite her job." Okay, first word, Mindy. 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 Okay, and the second one that I had some difficulty with was quit. Quit. Q U I T. She quit her job. Okay, so what do we see in here that is figurative language? She has been working like a dog. Okay, and what does that mean? Uh, vigorously, maybe uh, uh, under pressure. Okay, very good. Yes, she was working vigorously. She was working very hard. Um, they stayed on her. They yelled and at her every day. That's not a good place to work, I don't think. Um, all right, let's see what's the next one. What is the next figurative language phrase in that short story? Teacher, may I try? Yes. Um, that is the last draw. Okay, and what does that mean? That was the um, last that straw. It, it, it means uh, it, it, that is her uh, maybe last efforts to his uh, her job. Okay. Anybody else have anything to add? It's maybe she uh, give up to her job just because of work under pressure doing a lot of work hard work so okay maybe... so yes so she is tired of working so hard and her boss just yelling and she had to redo the big project and she just said that's it i'm done i quit Okay, so that's the last straw. Um, kind of the original of that little figurative language is the straw that broke the camel's back. So you're filling up the camel's um, little bags with straw and that one last thing broke the camel's back. And so that means that I'm done. I'm not taking any, I can't do anything more. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that at all? Before we move on, no, I thought these are not very good. They're kind of boring, but I, I wanted you all to have an opportunity to read some of these figurative language um, sayings in a little paragraph. So, all right, who wants to read about the science fair? This Someone is Francisco, may I try, please? Hold on one second, Francisco. I'm gonna let Sati read because you've had an opportunity to read. Uh, okay, all right. Thank you, teacher. Uh -huh. The science fair. Jackie had been working on a project for the science fair for three weeks. She was so nervous to present it in front of the whole school. When she was waiting for the bus, her dad said, be as cool as a cucumber. After the presentation, Jackie thought that was as easy as ABC. Okay. What are our figurative language phrases? Be as cool as a cucumber. Okay, and what does that mean? Mean that uh, because cucumber is cool, right? So mean that um, be confident. Yeah. <laughs> be, strong. be cool, confident. That's correct. And what's the next one? That was as easy as ABC. And what does that mean? Mean that it's like, yeah, seem like uh, a piece of a cake. It's really easy, actually. Yes, <laughs> very easy, a piece of cake. All right, good job. Everybody agree with those? Thank you. Yes, it's true. Yeah, what All she right. said was it true. Okay. 
All right, let's look at the next one. Huh. Running. My least favorite thing. Running. Can I try? Uh, yes. Is this Tariq? <clears throat> okay. It's not Tariq, teacher. He's Ahmad. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It, it's oh, okay. It's okay if, if he if you want to read. <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm just I'm trying to recognize everybody's voice in them. Okay, okay. So about running. Ted loves to run. He has been running since he was four years old. This weekend, he will be running a marathon. Everybody thinks Ted is as fit as a fiddle. His whole family is going to come to watch him run his marathon. They will probably think that Ted run like the wind. Okay. First of all, do you guys know about a marathon? Yes. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a gathering of people that running slowly in along the streets and then they, they pick the the top 10 of them or I like so but it, it's it is very healthy and uh, and a, a good thing to do. Okay a marathon is a little over 26 miles so when you think about running a marathon, Think about running a little over 26 miles. All right, so what are the figurative language phrases in this little short story? Ted is as fit as a fiddle. Okay, what does that mean? He's as fit as a fiddle. Uh, well, what's the meaning of fiddle? A fiddle is a musical instrument. It's also known as a violin. Uh-huh, okay. So when we think of the violin, we think of it's perfectly curved and everything is in the right place and it's a yeah. thing to look at. So Ted was in, in the marathon uh, fast and uh, slim, easy to, to, to run. Okay. Yeah. What about the next one? What's the next figurative language phrase? Um, Ted run like the wind. Yes. What does that mean? That he's really fast. He's like the air. The air. All right. Yes, he's super fast. All right. Good job. Any questions on those? Nope. All right. All right. Let's read about little baby Anna. Francisco, would you like to read this one? Hello, teacher Benera. Hello. Yes, please. Okay. Little, little baby Ann. Megan's sister just had a baby. She is going to go to meet the baby for the first time today. Megan's sisters told her she needed to be as gentle as a lamb to keep the baby safe. When she arrived, Megan thought the baby was as so cute as a button. She even got to feed the baby. All right. So what are our figurative language phrases there? May I try, teacher? Sure. Yeah. Baby was, uh, baby was as cute as a button. Okay. What does that mean? It, it means... Uh, he, he he's so cute. Uh, actually, actually, the phrase compare a baby like button, right? Uh, his cute round face, maybe. 
Yes, that's exactly right. All right. Francisco, do you know what the other phrase is in that sentence? I mean, in that story? Megan thought that baby was a kid as a button. Okay. What's the other one? We just talked about that one. What's the other one? There's another phrase in there. As gentle as a lamb. Okay, what does that mean? Gentle as a lamb. Anybody know? Gentle as a lamb. May Can I try, try it? Too? Sure. Who wants to try it? Alicia? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. Gentle as a lamb to keep the baby safe. It means to care a baby very carefully. Okay. Carefully to uh, lift him or uh, take care of the baby. Okay. Anybody else have anything different to add? May I try, Mr. Pinto? Yes. Uh, maybe can you uh, respectfully ed educate uh, the baby like a lamb to follow uh, instructions? Okay. Well, we're going to be, we're treating the baby like a lamb. So how do you treat a lamb, which is also a baby, a baby sheep? How do we treat the baby? Gentle as a lamb to keep him safe. Yes, teacher. Uh, Ahmed? Yeah, uh, maybe uh, it, it means that when the baby being in the dark, it will be dangerous for him because he may fall from some point or that. So uh, once a lamp is on, then everything will be settled. So it will be safe for it. Okay. That's All right. Strange. Okay, let me see. Naeem, do we have a teacher that's ready to go for the next group? No, I don't believe we have. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and finish these up then since we don't have another teacher. Okay. So when we treat somebody like a lamb, we think of a lamb as something that's gentle and soft and pleasant. So we're, we're being very careful with the baby so we don't hurt it, all right? Because when you see a lamb, a mama, a sheep and the baby lamb, she's very gentle and she takes care of it. Any questions about that one? No, ma'am. All righty, who wants to read our babysitter? Somebody who hasn't had an opportunity to read? Would like to read this time? Alicia? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Our babysitter. Our babysitter is the best. He has a dark brown hair and is as pretty as a picture. Sometimes she will let us have a late night snake. Sorry, snack if we are good. The only bad thing about our babysitter is that she watches us like a hawk. Uh, may I pronounce correct, teacher? It's, it's hawk. hawk. It is hawk. hawk. Mm -hmm. Thank you, hawk. We can never get away with anything. Okay. So do you know what a hawk is? Not exactly. Sorry, teacher. That's okay. It's a big bird. Oh, goodness. It's a big bird of prey, and they they kind of soar around and watch the ground and see something they want to have a snack. So they'll swoop down and pick up the little mouse or whatever it might happen to be. Um, so a hawk is a big bird of 
prey who watches the ground um, to find something to snack on herself. Okay, what are the figurative language phrases in this little short story? Julia, do you know what they are? What one of them is anyway? Um, yeah, um, I'll take a shot. <laughs> okay, go for it. Okay. Mm, I thought about she is as pretty as a picture and she watches us like a hawk. Okay. That are these two. Okay. What does pretty as a picture mean? Maybe, I don't know, but I suppose that means um, someone who is so pretty, so perfect, like a picture. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. That is correct. And, yes. Yeah. And she watches us like a hawk means someone who um, watches us attentively, very attentively, like a that hawk. Yes. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. All right, let's look at the dancing team. Yes, yes, teacher, about she watches us like a hawk. I think we didn't discuss it. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, it's like uh, she watches us. It's like she stare at us. Okay. Yeah. That would work also. Mm. Whatever we're doing, she's watching. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Who would like to read the next one? I would like to do it, teacher. All right. Go right ahead. Uh, the dancing team. Yesterday was the dance recital for Parkview Elementary School. Marcus and Julia were a dancing team. Marcus thought that dancing was not his cup of tea. But Julia was a grateful as a swan. Together, they received second place in the partner dancing category. What are our phrases here? Mm, maybe Julia was as grateful so, as grateful as a swam. Okay. And what do you like think that means? In the water. <laughs> okay. Swans are very graceful as they glide across the water. All right. What about the other one? There's another one in there. Um, cup of tea. All when right. you're not good at something, but you can do it, but not in the best way. Okay. Anybody have anything to add to that one? Not my cup of tea. Okay. The only other thing that I would add there is it's not my favorite thing. It's not my cup of tea. I don't really care for it. Okay. Any questions on those? Or discussion? No, no. Everything is clear. Mm -hmm. Did you have something to add? No. Okay. All right. Let's go down to swimming. Who would like to read swimming? Ahmed? Yes, please. Okay. Swimming. Ami is a really good swimmer. She swims like a fish. Ami has been swimming for 10 years and has won over 20 tourna tour tournaments. Someday, Ami is hoping to compete in the Olympics as a swimmer. Ami's arms are as hard as a rock from swimming laps in the pool. Okay. Um, yeah. This name is pronounced Amy. Amy. Amy, okay. Okay. Amy. All right. And do we know the meaning of tournaments? Tournaments. It's like, uh, it's like when, when, when for example, uh, 10 teams uh, competing together. So there are a winner in the end. These winner and these teams uh all, all the teams called uh tournaments okay yes yeah. so 
Yes. You have so many teams and then you do an elimination and somebody comes out to be the winner. That's correct. Yes, yes. Does anybody else uh, have any different way to explain that? And ab about the figurative language? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the figurative language. The, the first one, she swims like a fish. Okay, that, mean, that means she swims too fast. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Amy's arms are as hard as a rock from swimming laps in the pool. That mean uh, her arms are very strong. So it's, it's similar to a rock. Yes. Okay. So she's got, she's built up her muscles. Her arms are really hard from swimming. Yes. All right. And swimming like a fish. Now she's in, she's been winning some tournaments. So if she's swimming like a fat, a fish, is she swimming well, or is she swimming too fast? means she's swimming well. She is swimming well if she swims like a fish. All right, any questions on those? No, teacher. All right, who wants to read about the roller coaster ride? Somebody who hasn't read before? Want to give it a try? Alejandro. Roller coaster ride. Nick's dad is a very wise man. Uh, Nick calls him a wise old. Uh, he always say, says life is a roller coaster. Sometimes things are good and sometimes things are bad. Yesterday, Nick had a very bad day and thought to himself, life is a roller coaster and it will get better soon. Okay. First of all, I want to correct you. The word O-W-L is an owl. It's an owl. Owl. Mm -hmm. That's the correct pronunciation on that. All right. So what are our figurative languages phrases here? Nick calls him a wise owl. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, that is a uh, very uh, wisdom person. Uh, uh, can be uh, quiet sometimes, and uh, it seems to be an uh, owl. Okay, so owls are very quiet and very smart. What's the next one? The next figurative language phrase. Anybody know? Can I try? Yes, you can. Life is a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Mean that, uh, yeah, life is not sometimes easy. It's like a roller coaster. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down, right? So it can be good. It can be bad also. Yes, very good. All right. I think that's all that we have in that little short paragraph. Who wants to read about the police officer? Alicia. Thank you, Mom. Mm -hmm. The police officer, Jim, is a police officer in a Chicago, Illinois. He has a heart of a lion. Jim works every day to keep the city as safe as possible. Tomorrow, Jim has his yearly review. This means his boss will tell him if he is doing a good job or not. Jim hopes he gets a glowing review. Okay. What are our figurative language phrases in this little sentence, uh, this little paragraph? Um, he has a heart of a lion. All right, and what does that mean? It, it means it's a very brave man. Okay, that's correct. What is the other one? The other figurative language phrase. Glowing review. All right, and what does that mean? Glowing review is, 
describe his uh, someone described his job uh, or or his gave a uh, appreciation to his work maybe if i'm not correct okay anybody have anything different there ahmed you have something different to add uh no no teacher okay. i don't have yeah right Okay, a glowing review. Glowing review means that it was really, really good. You did an outstanding job. Everything they had to say about you was positive and it made you feel really proud. So you got that glowing review. So everything is good. And you're insured to re be rehired for the next year in your job. All right, let's see. We've got two more of these before it's time to um, head out. So who wants to read about the football team? All right, Sati, go ahead. Okay. The football team. Bob is the shining star of the high school football team. The team is made up of 20 high school boys. They are going to the state high school football tournament this upcoming weekend. Bob and his team are hoping for the sweet smell of success. All if right. they win, they will go to Mexico. Okay. Um, there's another little um, typo in this one. Shining star, not shining start. Oh. So the shining star. The shining star. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So what are our figurative languages passages in this one? Shining star. And what does that mean? Means that the best in the team. Yes, he is the best on the team. And what else is figurative in this little phrase? Sweet smell of success. All right, sweet smell of success. And what does that one mean? Mean that uh, he, I mean, Bob, hope that he can get a little bit success in the team in the okay. games sorry okay they want to be the winners they want they they can smell it they're ready for it smells like something that they want all right anybody have anything to add on that one <laughs> all right <laughs> the last one who wants to <laughs> rain <laughs> Oh, goodness. This is Francisco. May I try, please? Yes, you may. Go ahead, Francisco. Rain, rain, rain. It is springtime. Yesterday, it was raining cats and dogs all night. My mom was so sleepy that she doesn't even remember the rain. She said her memory is a little cloudy. I was jumping for joy about the rain because I love stopping in all of the puddles. Okay, what do we have here that's figurative? It was raining cats, cats and dogs all night. Why and what does that mean, raining cats and dogs? It's raining a lot, very heavy. Okay. And also, uh, she said her memory is a little cloudy. Okay. What do we know about that? My memory is a bit cloudy. That is not clear. Not clear. Good. All right. We have... We have one more in there, Francisco. Do you know which one it is? Her memory is a little cloudy. Okay, what does that mean? Mm. 
she wasn't clear or she didn't remember that was raining yesterday. Okay, she wasn't clear. All right, we've got one more little figurative phrase in there. What is the next one? Teacher, may I try? Yes. It's jumping in all of the puddles. Okay, is that something we can actually do? Okay. What in there is figurative? We're looking for one more figurative phrase. It's jumping for joy. Jumping for joy. And what does that one mean? To related to enjoyment of rainy moment. Yes. Or you that mean, is correct. She's very happy. She's jumping up and down for joy. She's so happy that it's raining. We're getting a little rain here today in Oklahoma. So we're all jumping for joy because it's been really dry here. Okay, that concludes our little um, figurative language short, short stories. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions on any of that? It was a great lesson. Mm, I appreciate that. Thank you, teacher. You're very welcome. Yes, teacher. I'm glad that you thought it was a good really lesson. Great lesson Thank you. To and I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We are going to call it quits for today. I will be back in the morning and we'll see what I can come up with. All right. Yeah, all, all, always nice idea. <laughs>